Okay, we come to the next sutta, 97, Dhananjani Sutta. This sutta is quite interesting. Thus have I heard, on one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha, in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Now on that occasion, the Venerable Sariputta was wandering in the southern hills with a large Sangha of monks. Then a certain monk who had spent the rains at Rajagaha went to the Venerable Sariputta in the southern hills and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down at one side, and the Venerable Sariputta asked him, Is the Blessed One well and strong, friend? The Blessed One is well and strong, friend. Is the Sangha of monks well and strong, friend? The Sangha of monks too is well and strong, friend. Friend, there is a Brahmin named Dananjani living in Rajagaha at the Tandula Pala gate. Is that Brahmin Dananjani well and strong? That Brahmin Dananjani too is well and strong, friend. Is he diligent, friend? How could he be diligent, friend? He plunders Brahmin householders in the name of the king, and he plunders the king in the name of the Brahmin householders. His wife, who had faith and came from a clan with faith, has died, and he has taken another wife, a woman without faith, who comes from a clan without faith. This is bad news that we hear, friend. It is bad news indeed to hear that the Brahmin Dhananjani has become negligent. Perhaps sometime or other we might meet the Brahmin Dhananjani and have some conversation with him. Then having stayed in the southern hills as long as he chose, the Venerable Sariputta set out to wander towards Rajagaha. Wandering by stages, he eventually arrived at Rajagaha, and there he lived in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Stop here for a moment. So here, Venerable Sariputta is asking this monk who had just come from Rajagaha about uh, the, the, the Buddha, the Sangha, and then his old friend, Dananjani. Dananjani is supposed to be his old friend. And this Brahmin Dananjani uh, had a wife uh, who followed the Buddhist religion, but that wife passed away. So after the wife passed away, he took another wife uh, uh, who follows the external sect uh, religions. Uh, and because uh, the wife followed the external sect religion, uh, he also probably came to follow the wife's religion uh, and was not was not keeping the precepts. Uh. So the Venerable Sariputta was disappointed to hear uh, that uh, this monk says he plunders Brahmin, Brahmins uh, in the name of the king and he plunders the king in the name of the Brahmins. Uh. Then when it was morning, the Venerable Sariputta dressed and taking his bowl and outer robe, went into Rajagaha for arms. Now at that time, the Brahmin Dananjani was having his cows milked in a cow shed outside the city. So when the Venerable Sariputta had wandered for arms in Rajagaha and had returned from his arms round, after his meal, he went to the Brahmin Dananjani. The Brahmin Dananjani saw the Venerable Sariputta coming in the distance, and he went to him and said, Drink some of this fresh milk, Master Sariputta, until it is time for the meal. Enough, Brahmin, I have finished my meal for today. I shall be at the root of that tree for the day's abiding. You may come there. Yes, sir, he replied. Let's stop here for a moment. Huh? This part is quite interesting. A lot of, I think a lot of people don't notice it. Huh? This Dananjani, huh, being an old friend of Venerable Sariputta and formerly being a follower of the Buddha, he should know, uh, be quite aware of the monk's rules uh, about the monks eating one meal a day. During the Buddha's times, uh, the monks were eating one meal a day. Uh, and uh, so you notice here, he wants to offer the main meal uh, to Venerable Sariputta, but he's uh, offering Venerable Sariputta uh, some fresh milk uh, before the meal. Uh, this is very interesting because uh, the, the Buddha's disciples, uh, they don't take uh, uh, food uh, except at the main meal. Uh. So here uh, it would appear like fresh milk uh, is not considered uh, uh, food in that sense, uh, in, the, in the monks' vinaya, uh, soft food. Uh, soft food, uh, soft food is, uh, uh, is to be taken only... Uh, once, la. Mm. but later, of course, the Buddha relaxed and said that after 
taking that meal, if there's some leftover, uh, they can take it again, uh, as long as it's not past noon. Uh. So here, uh, milk is not considered a uh, normal food, uh, because uh, nowadays, uh, there's a lot of fuss about milk, uh, that uh, monks cannot drink milk in the evening. Uh. But other products of milk uh, are allowed, uh, for example, butter, cheese, uh, ghee, Cheese is in the Thai tradition, and then ghee is allowed. Uh, so, uh, it's very strange uh, that milk is not allowed. From here, uh, and also from another incident in the Vinaya, it would appear that perhaps uh, during the Buddha's time, uh, the monks did take milk in the evening, uh, because in the Vinaya books, uh, there is a... Uh, uh, it is mentioned, uh, there's this rich man, Mandaka. Uh, the Buddha came to a certain part of the country and was wandering in, uh, with, uh, with a large sangha of monks. Uh, and because of the Buddha's reputation, uh, and the Buddha ate one meal a day, uh, all the days uh, for the Buddha's uh, lunch dana were already booked by people. Uh, many people had already uh, made uh, appointments uh, to provide food for the Buddha. So this rich man, Mandaka, he did not get a chance to offer food nah, to the Buddha and the Sangha. So what he did was, since there were 1,250 Arahans, nah, he called his workers, nah, being a rich man, nah, to get nah, 1,250 milk cows nah, and follow the Buddha. Uh -huh. So the fact that he uh, took these cows to follow the Buddha, and the Sangha shows that probably uh, he wants to provide milk the whole day and night. Uh, so perhaps uh, during the Buddha's time, uh, they did take milk. Uh, also, this is another case uh, where they are offering milk uh, before the main meal. Uh, mm. Okay, this is a point I wanted to make. Uh. And then after he had eaten his morning meal, the Brahmin Dananjani went to the Venerable Sariputta and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down at one side. And the Venerable Sariputta asked him, Are you diligent, Dananjani? And he said, How can we be diligent, Master Sariputta, when we have to support our parents, our wife and children, and our slaves, servants and workers, when we have to do our duty towards our friends and companions, towards our kinsmen and relatives, towards our guests, towards our departed ancestors, towards the deities and towards the king, and when this body must also be refreshed and nourished. Let's stop here for a moment. So here, Venerable Sariputta is asking him uh, whether he is diligent in the Dhamma, uh, probably meaning uh, that uh, whether he is practicing dana, sila, uh, learning the Dhamma, and memorizing the Dhamma, and all that. Uh, so he said, how can he, 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 he be diligent in the Dhamma when he has to support so many people? Uh, this is uh, a typical excuse uh, that some people give. Uh, uh, they have to do all kinds of duty. Uh, there you see what Member Sariputta says. What do you think, Dananjani? Suppose someone here were to behave contrary to the Dhamma, to behave unrighteously for the sake of his parents, and then because of such behavior, the wardens of hell were to drag him off to hell. Would he be able to free himself by pleading thus? It was for the sake of my parents that I behave contrary to the Dhamma, that I behave unrighteously, so let not the wardens of hell drag me off to hell. Or would his parents be able to free him by pleading thus? It was for our sake that he behaved contrary to the Dhamma, that he behave unrighteously, so let not the wardens of hell drag him off to hell. No, Master Sariputta, even while he was crying out, the wardens of hell would fling him into hell. What do you think, Dananjani? Suppose someone here were to behave contrary to the Dhamma, to behave unrighteously for the sake of his wife and children, or for the sake of his slaves, servants and workers, or for the sake of his friends and companions, or for the sake of his kinsmen and relatives, or for the sake of his guests, or for the sake of his departed ancestors, or for the sake of deities, or for the sake of the king, or for the sake of refreshing and nourishing his body. And because of such behavior, the wardens of hell were to drag him off to hell. Would he be able to free himself by pleading thus? It was for the sake of, 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 uh, uh, of 
wife and children, slaves, servants, etc., uh, that I behave contrary to the Dhamma, that I behave unrighteously. So let not the wardens of hell drag me off to hell. Or would others be able to free him by pleading thus? It was for the sake of refreshing uh, of his, it was for the sake of his relatives uh, and friends, etc., that he behaved contrary to the Dhamma, that he behaved unrighteously. So let not the wardens of hell drag him off to hell. No, Master Sariputta, even while he was crying out, the wardens of hell would fling him into hell. Let's stop here for a moment. So here you notice, uh, what is mentioned here is interesting, that uh, if a person's karma is such uh, that he is to be reborn in hell, uh, the wardens of hell uh, would come up uh, and drag him down to hell. Uh, this is one of the few places uh, where they mention this uh, in the suttas. Uh, that's why in the Chinese tradition uh, we have this Wu Tao Be Bin, Nao Tao Ma Min, uh, these hell beings coming uh, to drag somebody down to hell, uh, drag his soul down to hell. Uh, so this, this one thing I like to mention, uh, which is uh, interesting uh, in the Buddhist tradition. The other thing is, uh, if a person uh, uh, conducts himself uh, uh, not according to Dhamma, that means he breaks the precepts, uh, uh, and he does it uh, for the sake of his parents, or for his family, or for his relatives, or for his uh, friends and servants and workers as, and all that. Nah. Mm. This King Yama in hell nah, is not going to excuse him. Nah. He will still be dragged down to hell. Nah. Uh, so we cannot give the excuse nah, that we have to work nah, and earn a livelihood nah, for our relatives nah, that we cannot practice the precepts. Nah. Uh. What do you think, Dananjani? Who is the better? One who, for the sake of his parents, behaves contrary to the Dhamma, behaves unrighteously. Or one who, for the sake of his parents, behaves according to the Dhamma, behaves righteously. Master Sariputta, the one who, for the sake of his parents, behaves contrary to the Dhamma, behaves unrighteously, is not the better. The one who, for the sake of his parents, behaves according to the Dhamma, behaves righteously, is the better. Stop here for a moment. So, um, for the sake of your parents, a uh, person uh, should behave uh, according to the Dhamma. When a person behaves according to the Dhamma, he is the one who benefits. And also, his parents also will benefit. But if he behaves uh, contrary to the Dhamma, then he will have to suffer for it. And his parents also uh, uh, are not going to benefit from it. If he suffers, his parents also uh, uh, won't be happy. Nah. Dananjani, there are other kinds of work, profitable and in accordance with the Dhamma, by means of which one can support one's parents, and at the same time, both avoid doing evil and practice merit. Uh, this sentence is very important. Uh, sometimes some people uh, do certain types of livelihood, uh, and they give some excuse, uh, like uh, rearing... Uh, uh, pigs uh, to support the family and to sell the pigs or chicken uh, uh, fowl uh, to, to be slaughtered. Now, uh, this is one of the uh, uh, trades uh, or business uh, that the Buddha says a lay person should not uh, do. Uh, there are five kinds of trade uh, the Buddha says a lay person should not do. One is to buy and sell human beings, uh, slavery. Uh, uh, nowadays, is still. Uh, practice illegally. Uh, another one is to uh, buy and sell liquor la, or any intoxicant like drugs and all that. La. Another one is to trade in weapons la, that kill. La. Another one is to trade in uh, insecticide and herbicides la, that kill a lot of insects and worms, etc. And the fifth one la, is not to rare animals la, for sale, la, to be slaughtered. La. For example, rearing uh, uh, cattle, or rearing pigs, rearing chickens and ducks and all that, uh, which you sell to the market to be slaughtered. Uh. So, um, if a person does all these uh, types of trade, uh, in the end, uh, when he's dragged off to hell, uh, he cannot give the excuse uh, that it's because of his parents or for his relatives or his family, etc. What do you think, Dananjani? Who is the better? 
one who for the sake of his wife and children, for the sake of his slaves, servants and workers, or for the sake of his friends and companions, or for the sake of his kinsmen and relatives, or for the sake of his guests, or for the sake of his departed ancestors, or for the sake of deities, or for the sake of the king, or for the sake of refreshing and nourishing his body, behaves contrary to the Dhamma, behaves unrighteously, or one who for the uh, for the sake of all his relatives, etc., and himself, uh, behaves according to the Dhamma, behaves righteously. Master Sariputta, the one who, for the for the sake of his relatives and friends, etc., uh, behaves contrary to the Dhamma, behaves unrighteously, is not the better. The one who, for the for the sake of his relatives and family and uh, etc., uh, behaves according to the Dhamma, behaves righteously, is the better. Tananjani, there are other kinds of work, profitable and in accordance with the Dhamma, by means of which one can refresh and nourish this body, and at the same time both avoid doing evil and practice merit. Mm. This sentence is very important uh, because not only uh, reading in all these uh, things, uh, but a lot of uh, work uh, sometimes people do uh, is not good for them. Uh. But they think uh, it's necessary. It's not like here when Sariputta says uh, it's not really necessary uh, because there are so many other types of work uh, which is profitable uh, and in accordance with the Dhamma. But the problem is sometimes uh, some people uh, they want to find the easy way. Uh, like uh, if, you, if you just, uh, I can give some simple example. For example, if a, if a woman uh, prostitutes herself uh, just because she can uh, it's easy work and can get a lot of money uh, uh, in the end she's going to suffer for it or if a person sells drugs uh, uh, or any of these illegal uh, 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 professions uh, uh, I mean it's, they make big money uh, and it's easy uh, to make big money but at the end of their life uh, which is so short uh, they will have to suffer for it uh. Then the Brahmin Dananjani, having delighted and rejoiced in the Venerable Sariputta's words, rose from his seat and departed. On a later occasion, the Brahmin Dananjani became afflicted, suffering and gravely ill. Then he told a man, Come, good man, go to the Blessed One, pay homage in my name with your head at his feet, and say, Venerable Sir, the Brahmin Dananjani is afflicted, suffering and gravely ill. He pays homage with his head at the Blessed One's feet. Then go to the Venerable Sariputta, pay homage in my name with your head at his feet and say, Venerable Sir, the Brahmin Dharanjani is afflicted, suffering and gravely ill. He pays homage with his head at the Venerable Sariputta's feet. Then say thus, it would be good, Venerable Sir, if the Venerable Sariputta would come to the house of the Brahmin Dharanjani out of compassion. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So you see, huh? after a short while, huh? even if it's a few years, huh? it's still a short while. Uh, this person uh, suddenly is on the deathbed already. Uh, yes, my good sir, the man replied. And he went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to the Blessed One, he sat down at one side and delivered his message. Then he went to the Venerable Sariputta, and after paying homage to the Venerable Sariputta, he delivered his message, saying, It would be good, Venerable Sir, if the Venerable Sariputta would come to the residence of the Brahmin Dhananjani out of compassion. The Venerable Sariputta consented in silence. Then the Venerable Sariputta dressed, and taking his pole and outer robe, he went to the residence of the Brahmin Dhananjani, sat down on a seat made ready, and said to the Brahmin Dhananjani, I hope you are getting well, Brahmin. I hope you are comfortable. I hope your painful feelings are subsiding and not increasing, and that their subsiding, not their increase, is apparent. And Dhananjani said, Master Sariputta, I am not getting well. I am not comfortable. My painful feelings are increasing, not subsiding. Their increase and not their subsiding is apparent. Just as if a strong man was splitting my head open with a sharp sword, so too violent winds cut through my head. I am not getting well. Just as if a strong man were tightening a tough leather strap around my head as a headband, so too there are violent pains in my head. I am not getting well. Just as if a skilled butcher or his apprentice were to carve up an ox's belly with a sharp butcher's knife, so too violent winds are carving up my belly. I am not getting well. 
just as if two strong men were to seize a weaker man by both arms and roast him over a pit of hot coals. So too, there's a violent burning in my body. I'm not getting well. I'm not comfortable. My painful feelings are increasing, not subsiding. The increase and not the subsiding is apparent. A lot of people in life are like that. They don't expect that death will come so soon. And suddenly, when the end, at the, at the end of life, uh, experiencing all these uncomfortable feelings, uh, and then they become scared uh, because uh, they don't have enough good karma. Uh, they have uh, a lot of bad karma. Uh. What do you think, Dadanjani? Which is better, hell or the animal realm? The animal realm, Master Sariputta. Which is better, the animal realm or the realm of ghosts? The realm of ghosts, Master Gautama, uh, Master Sariputta. Which is better, the realm of ghosts or the realm of human beings? Human beings, Master Sariputta. Which is better, human beings or the gods of the heaven of the four great kings? The gods of the heaven of the four great kings, Master Sariputta. Which is better, the gods of the heaven of the four great kings or the gods of the heaven of the thirty-three? The gods of the heaven of the thirty-three, Master Sariputta. Which is better, the gods of the heaven of the thirty-three or the Yama gods? The Yama gods, Master Sariputta. Which is better, the Yama gods or the gods of the Tusita heaven? The gods of the Tusita heaven, Master Sariputta. Which is better, the gods of the Tusita heaven or the gods who delight in creating? The gods who delight in creating, Master Sariputta. Which is better, the gods who delight in creating or the gods who wield power over others' creations? The gods who wield power over others' creations, Master Sariputta. What do you think, Jananjani? Which is better, the gods who wield power over others' creations or the Brahma world? Master Sariputta said the Brahma world. Master Sariputta said the Brahma world. Then the Venerable Sariputta thought, these Brahmins are devoted to the Brahma world. Suppose I show the Brahmin Dananjani the path to the company of Brahma. And he said, Dananjani, I shall show you the path to the company of Brahma. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, sir, he replied. The Venerable, the Venerable Sariputta said, What is the path to the company of Brahma? Here, Dananjani, a monk abides pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with loving kindness, metta. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth quarter. So above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself, he abides pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. This is the path to the company of Brahma. Again, Dananjani, a monk provides, abides pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with compassion, with, a pre, with joy, with a mind imbued with equanimity. Likewise, the second, likewise, the third, likewise, the fourth quarter. So above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself, he abides pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with equanimity, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. This too is the path to the company of Brahma. Then, Master Sariputta, pay homage in my name with your head at the Blessed One's feet and say, Remember, sir, the Brahmin Dananjani is afflicted, suffering, and gravely ill. He pays homage with his head at the Blessed One's feet. Then the Venerable Sariputta, having established the Brahmin Dananjani in the inferior Brahma world, rose from his seat and departed, while there was still more to be done. Soon after the Venerable Sariputta had left, the Brahmin Dananjani died and reappeared in the Brahma world. Then the Blessed One addressed the monks thus, Monks, Sariputta, having established the Brahmin Dhananjani in the inferior Brahma world, rose from his seat and departed, while there was still more to be done. Then the Venerable Sariputta went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and said, Venerable Sir, the Brahmin Dhananjani is afflicted, suffering and gravely ill. He pays homage with his head at the Blessed One's feet. Sariputta, having established the Brahmin Dananjani in the inferior Brahma world, why did you rise from your seat and leave while there was still more to be done? Remember, sir, I thought thus, these Brahmins are devoted to the Brahma world. Suppose I show the Brahmin Dananjani the path to the company of Brahma. Sariputta, the Brahmin Dananjani has died and has reappeared in the Brahma world. That's the end of the Sutta. So you can see from here that probably... 
uh, the earlier part uh, after Rebel Saliputta came to advise this Dhananjani uh, to practice in accordance with the Dhamma, he must have listened to Rebel Saliputta's words. Uh, and also, uh, he probably uh, had meditated. Uh, so this last moment uh, when Rebel Saliputta told him uh, to practice uh, this uh, radiation of loving kindness and compassion, joy and equanimity, uh, he did uh, and he was able to do it. Uh, so that's why he was reborn in the Brahma world. But what did the Buddha mean uh, by saying uh, that uh, there was still more to be done? Instead of just uh, helping this uh, Dhananjani to be reborn in the Brahma world, uh, uh, probably uh, Venerable Sariputta should have taught him the Dhamma. If he had taught him the Dhamma and he understood the Dhamma, then uh, he would have attained stream entry. If he had attained stream entry, uh, become an Arya, then uh, he will never be reborn in the woeful plains. Uh, probably that's what the Buddha meant. Uh, uh, but he was reborn in the Brahma world. If he's not an uh, Arya, there's a possibility later uh, that he will come down and even be reborn in the woeful plains. Uh, whereas if a person becomes an Arya, then you are secure, uh, you'll never be reborn in the woeful plains. Uh, and also, the number of lifetimes you have left uh, is limited. Uh, you will enter Nibbana soon. Uh. So this uh, sutta is interesting uh, for a lot of lay people. Uh, don't give the excuse uh, that uh, because of the family, because of having to look after the parents and all that, uh, that you cannot keep the precepts. Uh. You have to keep the precepts. Uh. You cannot give any excuse uh, if you don't keep the precepts. Uh. Uh, because uh, in the end, uh, we will have to pay uh, for our unwholesome karma with much suffering. Uh, and this suffering is not a short time, you know. If you are born in the woeful plains, uh, it's a very, very long time of suffering. Even the lowest, uh, even you are born as a ghost, uh, you'll be there uh, and suffer terribly. Uh, because every night, uh, it's a torture. Uh, every night, it's a torture for ghosts uh, going out, uh, looking for food. Uh, nothing to eat, uh, except all the corpses and all the uh, undesirable things. Uh.